Welcome to season two of the Wilkerson Family Library podcast, an audiobook of some of the most popular and hard to find writings of David and Gary Wilkerson. In season two, we're featuring the book, Have You Felt Like Giving Up Lately? This book by the late David Wilkerson was released in 1980. Pastor Dave knew we all harbor some lingering hurts. This book was his way of helping believers find genuine peace and true freedom from the bondage of what he called besetting infirmities. In the foreword, Pastor Dave wrote that the messages in this book were born in prayer, bathed in tears, tested through personal sorrow and suffering, and most important of all, founded on the true Word of God. Many have found healing in these messages, and it's our desire that you also find lasting peace. Have You Felt Like Giving Up Lately is brought to you by World Challenge, a ministry dedicated to empowering, equipping, and encouraging Christians in their daily faith. We are committed to evangelism and helping the least of these everywhere in the world. Your support makes a difference. We would not be able to create podcasts like this without generous listeners like you. You can donate to furthering works like these on our website, worldchallenge.org. Thank you for making this and other World Challenge resources possible. Now, chapter one, When You Hurt, read by Jason Staples. In one way or another, we are all hurting. Everyone is in the same boat. Even the laughing, happy-go-lucky crowd is hurting. They try to hide their hurt by drinking and joking, but it won't go away. Who hurts? The parents of a prodigal son or daughter. Millions of parents have been deeply wounded by children who have rejected their counsel. Those loving parents grieve over the deception and delinquency of children who were once tender and good. The victims of broken homes are hurting. The abandoned wife whose husband rejected her for another woman is hurting. The husband who lost the love of a wife is hurting. The children who lost their security are hurting. Others suffer illness cancer, heart problems, and a myriad of other human diseases. To be told by a doctor, you have cancer, you may die, has to be terrifying. Yet many listening to this message have experienced such pain and agony. Lovers break up. A boyfriend or girlfriend walks away, trampling on what was once a beautiful relationship. All that is left is a broken, wounded heart. And what about the unemployed? The despondent ones whose dreams have collapsed, the shut-ins, the prisoners, the homosexuals, the alcoholics. It is true, in one way or another, we are all hurting. Every person on earth carries his own burden of pain and hurt. There is no physical cure. When you are deeply hurt, no person on this earth can shut out the innermost fears and deepest agonies. The best of friends can't really understand the battle you're going through or the wounds inflicted on you. Only God can shut out the waves of depression and feelings of loneliness and failure that come over you. Faith in God's love alone can salvage the hurt mind. The bruised and broken heart that suffers in silence can be healed only by a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, and nothing short of divine intervention really works. God has to step in and take over. He has to intercept our lives at the breaking point, stretch forth His loving arms, and bring that hurting body and mind under His protection and care. God must come forth as a caring Father and demonstrate that He is there, making things turn out for good. He must, by His own power, dispel the storm clouds, chase away the despair and gloom, wipe away the tears, and replace the sorrow with peace of mind. Why me, Lord? What hurts most is that you know your love for God is strong, yet you can't seem to understand what He's trying to work out in your life. If you were cold toward His love, you could understand why prayers went unanswered. If you were running from God, you could probably understand why the testings and severe trials kept coming on. If you were a down-and-out sinner who despised the things of God, you could bring yourself to believe you deserve to be hurt badly. But you are not running. You are not rejecting Him in any way. You long to do His perfect will. You yearn to please God and want only to serve Him with all that is in you. That is why your hurting is so debilitating. 
it makes you feel there's something terribly wrong with you. You question your spiritual depth, and at times, you even question your sanity. From somewhere deep inside you, a voice whispers, Maybe I'm defective somehow. Maybe I'm being hurt so deeply because God can't see much good in me. I must be so out of his will. He has to discipline me to make me obedient. Friends try so hard to help. A bruised or broken heart causes the most excruciating pain known to mankind. Most other human hurts are only physical, but a heart that is wounded must carry a pain that is both physical and spiritual. Friends and loved ones can help soothe the physical pain of a broken heart. When they're there, laughing, loving, and caring, the physical pain eases, and there's temporary relief. But night falls, and with it comes the terror of spiritual agony. Pain is always worse in the night. Loneliness falls like a cloud when the sun disappears. The hurting explodes when you're all alone, trying to understand how to cope with the inner voices and fears that keep surfacing. Your friends, who really don't understand what you're going through, offer all kinds of easy solutions. They get impatient with you. They're mostly happy and carefree at the time, and they can't understand why you don't simply snap out of it. They suspect you're indulging in self-pity. They remind you that the world is filled with heartbroken, hurting people who have survived. More often, they want to pray that one-time, cure-all, solve-everything prayer. You're told to release your faith, claim a promise, confess a cure, and walk away from your despair. That's all well and good, but it's preaching that usually comes from Christians who've never known much suffering in their own lives. They are like Job's babysitters, who knew all the answers, but who could not relieve his pain. Job said to them, Ye are all physicians of no value. Thank God for well-meaning friends, but if they could experience your agony for even one hour, they would be changing their tunes. Put them in your place just once, feeling what you feel, experiencing the inner pain you carry, and they would be saying to you, how in the world can you take it? I couldn't handle what you're going through. Time heals nothing. Then there's that age-old cliche, time heals all wounds. You're told to hang in there, put on a smile, and wait for time to anesthetize your pain. But I suspect all the rules and cliches about loneliness are coined by happy, unhurt people. It sounds good, but it's not true. Time heals nothing. Only God heals. When you are hurting, time only magnifies the pain. Days and weeks go by, and the agony hangs on. The hurting won't go away no matter what the calendar says. Time may push the pain deeper into the mind, but one tiny memory can bring it to the surface. Truthfully, it doesn't help much either to know Christians have suffered before you down through the ages. You can identify with the suffering of Bible characters who survived tremendous ordeals of pain. But knowing that others have gone through great battles doesn't calm the hurt in your own bosom. When you read how they victoriously came out of their battles and you still haven't, it only adds to your hurt. It makes you feel as though they were very close to God to receive such answers to their prayers. It makes you feel unworthy of the Lord, because your problem lingers on in spite of all your spiritual efforts. Double Trouble People seldom get hurt just once. Most who hurt can show you other wounds also. Pain is layered over pain. A broken heart is usually a tender, fragile one. It's easily broken because it's not protected by a hard shell. Tenderness is mistaken for vulnerability by the hard-shelled heart. Quietness is misjudged as weakness. A total giving of oneself to another is mistaken as coming on too strong. The heart that is not afraid to admit its needs of love is misjudged as being too sexually oriented. It follows, then, that a tender heart that reaches for love and understanding is often the easiest to break. Hearts that are open and trusting are usually the ones that are wounded the most. This world is filled with men and women who have rejected the love offered them from a heart that is tender and gentle. Those strong, hard-shelled hearts that trust no one, hearts that give so little, hearts that demand love be constantly proved, hearts that are always calculating, hearts that are always manipulating and self-serving, hearts that are afraid to risk, are the ones that seldom get broken. They don't get wounded because there's nothing to wound. 
They're too proud and self-centered to allow anyone else to make them suffer in any way. They go about breaking other hearts and trampling on the fragile souls who touch their lives simply because they are so thick and dull at heart themselves, and they think everyone should be just as they are. The hard hearts don't like tears. They hate commitment. They feel smothered when asked to share from their own hearts. Heartbreakers do not get off easily. Part of the pain a broken heart must suffer is the thought that the offender, the heartbreaker, is going to get away with it all. The heart says, I'm the one hurt and wounded, yet I'm the one who pays the price. The offender gets off scot-free when he should pay for what he did. That's the problem with crosses. The wrong person usually gets crucified. But God keeps the books, and on Judgment Day, the books will be balanced. But even in this life, heartbreakers and people wounders pay a high price. No matter how they try to justify their hurtful actions, they cannot drown out the cries of the ones they have wounded. Like the blood of Abel which cried out from the ground, the cries of a broken heart can pierce the barrier of time and space and terrorize the hardest of hearts. Hurts are usually caused by outright lies, and every liar must eventually be brought to justice. Is there a balm for a broken heart? Is there a healing for those deep inner hurts? Can the pieces be put back together and the heart made even stronger? Can the person who has known such horrible pain and suffering rise out of the ashes of depression and find a new and more powerful way of life? Yes, absolutely yes. And if not, then God's word would be a hoax and God himself would be a liar. That cannot be. Let me share a few simple thoughts about how to cope with your hurt. First, stop trying to figure out how and why you got hurt. What has happened to you is a very common ailment among mankind. Your situation is not unique at all. It's the way of human nature. Whether you were right or wrong means absolutely nothing at this point. All that matters now is your willingness to move on in God and trust His mysterious workings in your life. In 1 Peter 4.12-13, the Bible says, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. God didn't promise to give you a painless way of life. He promised you a way of escape. He promised you help to bear your pain and to give you strength to put you back on your feet when weakness makes you stagger. Most likely, you did what you had to do. You moved in the will of God, honestly following your heart. You went into it with an open heart, willing to give of yourself. Love was your motivation. You did not abort the will of God. Someone else did. If that were not true, you would not be the one who is hurting so. You are hurt because you tried to be honest. You can't understand why things blew up in your face when God seemed to be leading all along. Your heart asks, why did God allow me to get into this in the first place, if he knew it would never work out right? But the answer is clear. Judas was called by the Lord. He was destined to be a man of God. He was handpicked by the Savior. He could have been mightily used by God, but Judas aborted God's plan. He broke the heart of Jesus. What started out as a beautiful, perfect plan of God ended in disaster because Judas chose to go his own way. Pride and stubbornness wrecked the plan of God that was in operation. So lay off all your guilt trips. Stop condemning yourself. Stop trying to figure out what you did wrong. It's what you are thinking right now that really counts with God. You did not make a mistake. More than likely, you simply gave too much. Like Paul, you have to say, the more I loved, the less I was loved. See 2 Corinthians 12, 15. Then remind yourself God knows exactly how much you can take, and he will not permit you to reach a breaking point. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, our loving Father said, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. 
The worst kind of blasphemy is to think God is behind all of your hurt and pain. That it is the Heavenly Father disciplining you. That God thinks you need one or two more heartbreaks before you're ready to receive His blessings. Not so. It is true that the Lord chastens those He loves. But that chastening is only for a season and is not meant to hurt us. God is not the author of the confusion in your life. Neither are you. It is human failure. It's the enemy sowing tears in your field of endeavor. It's the deception in someone else near you who lost faith in God. The enemy tries to hurt us through other humans, just as he tried to hurt Job through an unbelieving wife. Your Heavenly Father watches over you with an unwavering eye. Every move is monitored. Every tear is bottled. He identifies with your every pain. He feels every hurt. He knows when you have been exposed to enough harassment from the enemy. He steps in and says, enough, when the hurt and pain no longer draw you closer to the Lord. When instead it begins to downgrade your spiritual life, God moves in. He will not permit a trusting child of his to go under because of too much pain and agony of soul. When the hurting begins to work to your disadvantage, when it begins to hinder your growth, God must act and lift you out of the battle for a while. He will never allow you to drown in your tears. He will not permit your hurt to destroy your mind. He promises to come right on time to wipe away your tears and give you joy for mourning. In Psalm 30, verse 5, God's word says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Third, when you hurt the worst, go to your secret prayer closet and weep out all your bitterness. Jesus wept. Peter wept bitterly. Peter carried with him the hurt of denying the very Son of God. He walked alone on the mountains, weeping in sorrow. Those bitter tears worked a sweet miracle in him. He came back to shake the kingdom of Satan. A woman who had endured a mastectomy wrote a book entitled, First You Cry. How true! Recently, I talked with a friend who was just informed he had terminal cancer. The first thing you do, he said, is cry until there are no more tears left. Then you begin to move closer to Jesus until you know his arms are holding you tight. Jesus never looks away from a crying heart. He said, a broken heart will I not despise. See Psalm 51, 17. Not once will the Lord say, get hold of yourself, stand up and take your medicine, grit your teeth and dry your tears. No, Jesus bottles every tear in his eternal container. Do you hurt? Bad? Then go ahead and cry. And keep on crying until the tears stop flowing. But let those tears originate only from hurt and not from unbelief or self-pity. Fourth, convince yourself you will survive. You will come out of it. Live or die, you belong to the Lord. Life does go on. You would be surprised how much you can bear with God helping you. Happiness is not living without pain or hurt, not at all. True happiness is learning how to live one day at a time in spite of all the sorrow and pain. It's learning how to rejoice in the Lord no matter what has happened in the past. You may feel rejected. You may feel abandoned. Your faith may be weak. You may think you're down for the count. Sorrow, tears, pain, and emptiness may swallow you up at times, but God is still on his throne. He is still God. You can't help yourself. You can't stop the pain and hurt. But our blessed Lord will come to you, and he will place his loving hand under you and lift you up to sit again in heavenly places. He will deliver you from the fear of dying. He will reveal his endless love for you. Look up. Encourage yourself in the Lord. When the fog surrounds you and you can't see any way out of your dilemma, lie back in the arms of Jesus and simply trust Him. He has to do it all. He wants your faith, your confidence. He wants you to cry aloud, Jesus loves me. He is with me. He will not fail me. He is working it all out right now. I will not be cast down. I will not be defeated. I will not be a victim of Satan. I will not lose my mind or my direction. God is on my side. I love him and he loves me. The bottom line is faith. 
and faith rests on this one absolute from Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. You've been listening to Chapter 1 of Have You Felt Like Giving Up Lately? Read by Jason Staples. This podcast is brought to you by World Challenge. Your support makes a difference. We would not be able to create podcasts like this one without generous listeners like you. Please consider donating to Power the Mission and make World Challenge resources like this podcast possible. You can make a donation on our website, worldchallenge.org. On our next episode of Have You Felt Like Giving Up Lately? You can't carry your own cross. Until then, we pray that you find hope and healing in the midst of discouragement.